All right, working title mod version 0.10.0. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things that have been added or changed since the 0.9.1 release. Uh, so right away, I'll just mention that LNAV has seen some general improvements. Uh, same thing for holds, uh, particularly with exiting holds or going direct to out of a hold. Um, a lot of times LNAV was getting stuck or just doing weird stuff previously, uh, so all of that should be fixed now in the new version. Uh, we now have better VNAV path smoothing. Uh, this was really noticeable in VNAV descents with sharp turns, like 90 degrees. Uh, you would a lot of times end up in a no path situation, and then you'd have to use the vertical speed to get back down. Uh, so it's now a lot more robust and shouldn't uh, do that, at least not too often. Uh, we fixed a lot of the bugs with the vertical speed not capturing altitudes, either pre-selector or constraint altitudes. Uh, so that's working again. Uh, the windshield is now always heated, which is more accurate to the real plane. Uh, so whenever the engines are running, uh, you shouldn't uh, have to worry about icing on the windshield. On the default plane, it was linked to this wing engine anti-ice button, uh, which is not correct, so that has been fixed. Uh, the PFD, MFD, and FMC or CVU uh, have all seen some uh, format improvements. Uh, so the first one I'll mention is the bearing source indicators. So I'll just bring these both up here. Uh, I can see we now have just a different format for them uh, in the bottom left side of the PFD and MFD. Uh, we now have these terrain and weather indications on both displays. Uh, so if I cycle it to terrain, you can see we get the uh, terrain over here, uh, highlights in blue. Cycle to weather, get, uh, all of this, and then cycle it back. Uh, so when they're both white, it just means they're both deselected. Uh, and it's exact same for the MFD. Uh, we also have a change in format to the Mach number, which we're not going to see since we're on the ground. Um, and then another thing is the V-speeds. Uh, so I have to go to Performance, Takeoff. I have the Perf in it and Takeoff reference stuff all calculated out. So if we go ahead and hit Send. Uh, I can see the numbers are a lot bigger, and that's due to uh, we removed the VREF and V approach speeds because you're not going to need to know those for takeoff. Uh, so that's been changed up a bit. Doo -doo -doo. Let's see, next we have the air source switch down here is now defaulted to normal. Uh, you would never really turn it off when you shut down the plane, so having it set to normal as the default uh, is just generally more accurate to the real plane. Next we have uh, improvements to the FMA up here, uh, particularly with the altitude hold modes. Uh, so now the plane will differentiate between holding a pressure altitude, a pre-selector altitude, or a constraint altitude. Uh, next the autopilot now supports arming approaches. Uh, so I'm not going to explain too much what that is, but essentially if you're flying uh, via the FMS, and you hit the approach button uh, when you're coming up to like an initial approach fix for an ILS. Uh, once the plane detects the localizer, it's actually going to s automatically switch the nav source from the FMS to uh, whichever nav radio has the uh, localizer tuned into it. Uh, so that's a really cool feature uh, for approaches. Uh, let's see, we have the range to altitude uh, banana now shows the range to the pre-selector altitude as opposed to the VNAV constraint altitude. Uh, so that's been fixed uh, to be more accurate. And next we have a work in progress message system. Uh, and this will give you alerts to either things that you have to do or things that the plane is about to do automatically. Uh, so just one example would be like if you're approaching the terminal area for an ILS, uh, first thing you'll see is this MSG pop-up uh, in this corner of the PFD. Uh, so that should alert you to look at the FMC. 
And then here you'll probably see a message like loc will be tuned or check loc tuning, uh, depending on whether the plane knows uh, which localizer frequency you're going to need. Uh, so then you can go in the message page and then you can also see uh, any messages that have popped up during the flight. And next we have uh, changes to the lighting system. So taxi, landing, and pulse are now all exclusive. And pulse is actually working now. Uh, so if we say change the time here, you can see that we now have pulse lights working, which is, in my opinion, pretty amazing. <laughs> And additionally, the strobe lights have been changed to have the right flashing sequence. So that's pretty neat. I'll turn that off. Okay, going back to the radios, uh, we've now updated the Nav 1 and 2 radio systems. So if we click on the LSK next to the radio, we now have this. Uh, control page. Uh, so in the top right here we can switch between manual and auto. Uh, if we switch it to auto it's gonna select the nearest VOR and as we go along in a flight uh, if we leave it in auto it's every six minutes it will tune to the nearest VOR in the database. Uh, so in real life this is used to uh, help uh, with the aircraft's positioning uh, but that's not really an issue in the sim. However it's uh, pretty neat feature. Uh, on top of that we also have these nav presets. Uh, so we can preset up to 20 frequencies and this is shared between both of the nav radios. Uh, so if there's an area you fly out of a lot you can say pre preset a nearby VOR frequencies or ILS frequencies uh, just so you have them to quickly switch to. And one of the final things here is the ability to now do vertical direct twos. And so just to give a brief example here, I move my map over. So say we're coming up to Torgi, uh, but before we reach Torgi, ATC uh, tells us to level off at some altitude. Uh, and then at some point they tell us to cross Offsen at say like 10,000 feet. Uh, we can actually do a vertical direct two. Uh, so in order to do that, we can go to direct, go down to the fix we're looking for, which is Offsen. And on the right side, you can see we now have these altitude constraint lines. And if we want to do a vertical direct two, all we have to do is type in the altitude we want, put it in the green side. And now if we go to the legs page, you can see it's now cleared out all of the constraints in front of this. And if we were in VNAV flying along this route, the plane would immediately uh, begin descending to this 10,000 feet. Uh, as long as BNAV was on and our altitude pre-selector wasn't uh, blocking the descent. Uh, additionally, if you have an at constraint in the legs page, uh, say like down here, you can just select the line from the direct page. You don't have to type anything in. And last thing here is the relative terrain map. And this replaces the default like green, brown, blue topographical map, which does not exist in the real plane. We now have a sort of rudimentary train radar, so in order to turn it on, we just use the train weather button like before. We'll see the train light up in blue just to show that it's selected. And if we zoom out, you can see it basically gives us a relative terrain map of the area. So if I go ahead, Let's see, put flaps down. If you go ahead and take off here.
And here you can see the flaps 35 and flaps 15 markers just to show the max operating speeds of them. Uh, but as we climb here, you'll start to see that the map is going to update. And it's a relative terrain, so as soon as we're above any terrain, it's going to disappear. So we still have terrain that's above us, way out here and behind us. And as we climb up, you'll see it slowly just disappears. And if we go back down, you'll we'll see that the plane starts to refresh. And last thing I'll cover here is the nav source preset. Uh, so the indication for this is over here, it's showing preset, and then you have this box. And so previously, if you wanted to change the nav source, you would use the nav source button here, and it would switch between FMS1, then go to nav1, nav2, and then back to FMS. Uh, however, now we have the preset system. So whatever is in this box is essentially like a standby nav source. So when you hit this nav source button uh, on the DCP, uh, it's pretty much just going to cycle between this nav source that's active and then the standby one. Uh, so right now it's in VOR1, so when we hit nav source, it's going to switch to VOR1. You can see FMS is now the preset. Hit it again, go back to FMS, and puts VOR1 back in the preset. Uh, in order to switch this, we use the data knob. Uh, so it's the inner uh, knob that's nested up here. And all we have to do is turn it. And we can see now it has VOR2 in the preset. So when we hit the nav source, we get VOR2. FMS goes in the preset. Hit it again, and they both switch. And the last thing you can do is switch between VORs. So if we go back to VOR2, we see FMS is in the preset. Switch the data knob. You can now see VOR1's in the preset. And we can cycle between the two VORs. And just to get back to the FMS, cycle the data switch again, or turn the data knob again, hit nav source, and go back to FMS.